Well, hello, traders. Welcome to this special edition, uh, this video upload, um, actually a presentation by an ICT charter member, uh, Jordan, uh, goes by uh, Base Trading Collective. Um, he was kind enough to do a presentation for uh, a group that I'm in, and he gave me permission to upload this and make it public to all of you, so you get to benefit from it. So uh, check this out. You're going to learn some great things uh, in this brief presentation. Jordan covers the basics of ICT and demonstrates how they are designed to blend together, creating confluence that you can trust, such as dealing ranges, how to find and mark them, uh, two types of fair value, uh, market structure, and IPTA look back, uh, using premium and discount to qualify and filter for high probability entries, and uh, the PD array matrix. What are they? How to spot them, blending it all together with context narrative, and, uh, and that draw on liquidity. So do me a favor, check out the video, but even before you do that, uh, check out uh, Base Trading Collective's YouTube page. Um, he's got lots of great videos that he's uploaded. Subscribe to his channel. Also, you can follow him on X. Um, all of his links are going to be in the video description below. And I uh, hope you enjoy this uh, great uh, wisdom uh, being shared uh, by Jordan. And uh, Give him, give him a big thanks. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section, but more importantly, subscribe to his channel. Show him some love. And without further ado, here's his video. Take it away. All right, good. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jordan. We're going to go ahead and do a quick presentation covering some ICT basics. Things we may have hit before, but we're going to try to do it in a quick, concise manner. Uh, I've got a list of about six things I want to cover here. And when I'm done, if you guys have any questions that we haven't hit, or uh, ones that you want to revisit, please let me know. And I'll be sure to get to those if we have enough time for everybody. So uh, the first thing I want to start off with is uh, the most important thing that is responsible for my breakthrough or one of my major breakthroughs, and that is spotting dealing ranges and just figuring out the two different ways to mark your dealing range. Uh, and again, I've mentioned this before, but those are liquidity grabs, and f failure swings, which is like an OTE, basically think of an optimal trade entry pattern where it doesn't get past the high, but it almost gets there and then re reverses. A failure swing is sort of like that, except typically it's returning to a rejection block and then going. The OTE doesn't quite get up to the rejection block unless it's a higher time frame rejection block and then you have more of the wick in that area. We'll, we'll get to the chart and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, but the spotting the dealing ranges is going to be the way that you mark them. That's going to be done one of two ways, just depending on the structure that's present. You'll be looking for a lower low and a higher high for the dealing range to mark those as end caps or the end points, the start and the finish of that particular range. That's what I like to mark with. And, uh, also the rejection block, you want to do those as well. So I'll show you two of those right now. Sometimes they combine together, like right here. Let's see if we can find just one of them. Here we go. So we don't see a lower low made, but we do see a rejection block entry. Jordan, I'm not seeing your screen, buddy. Oh, yeah, that's that's sorry about that. <laughs> okay, we'll start over. How about now? Looks good. Okay, yep. sorry about that. All right, so we'll see start by covering. Is there a way? How do I see this? All I see is the participants. Okay, here it is. I think I found the watch stream button. Got it. Thank you. No problem. Okay. All right, so we'll start with the dealing ranges. I found a particular example here. There's two types of ways that you can mark your dealing range or two types of main dealing ranges that play out, in my opinion, and that would be the uh, liquidity grab, which we all know is the beginning of a 2022 model, uh, which would be something like this. Do you see the higher high? And then you have, actually, this is a great spot to show both of them at once. Then you have the opposite of that, which is a failure swing or 
in this case, basically a return to a rejection block. So there's two ways you mark out the endpoints of a dealing range. And then what is a dealing range if we need to get that basic with it? It's just a price run that has a series of price legs inside of it. Here's one price leg. Here's another price leg. So there's two price legs inside of this. Let's just get real basic with it. Just think of this as a dealing range. Obviously, it's bullish. And here is the first price leg, and here is the second price leg. Now, we could get into a whole other discussion about why it forms like that, when it's going to form like that, what it's reaching for. But I want to stick very closely to this topic until you guys understand how to find them and spot them. And then you can get into the logic, the narrative, the targeting, all of this stuff that goes with it. Okay. So in this case, it's very interesting because we mark the end cap on a higher high, but we have a rejection here. And this is what it's going to look like. And when I say end cap, I just mean the beginning and the end of the dealing range, represented by those dots there. So hopefully you can see sometimes it will set up like this, and it's still valid to mark it out. Okay. And then what you have inside this parent price swing is a child dealing range, baby dealing range, whatever you want to call it. I would measure from this rejection block. So it's a little counterintuitive. You would want to see a lower low typically and say, all right, that's clear to me. That's the bottom of a dealing range. But this is still valid. And it's sharing the top end cap of the parent dealing range. Okay. And then we've got the same thing occurring in this previous opposing run to the downside. This is a dealing range to the downside, which is compro comprised or composed of several price legs here. One, two, three, four to be exact. Oh, five. Little baby one down here. Okay. And then I hate using this term, but change in the state of delivery. When people harp on that, they don't really know what they're talking about. They know what it is. But the change in state of delivery is the opposing PD array matrix is blending with the previous one. We'll get to that in a second. But let's spot the dealing range on the downside here so you guys can get a full uh, both ways uh, example of this concept. There's one dealing range. There's another dealing range. Let me take this. There we go. Sometimes they're squashed together. Sometimes they're expansive. They're not always going to be perfect replicas of each other. That's just how price plays out. Actually, I should stick to just marking the downside dealing ranges because each one of these up pushes, if you go, we're in the five minute, if you go down to the 15 second, you're going to see a, a full PD array matrix complete with an old low, a rejection block that's bullish, an order block, a fair value gap, potentially even a volume imbalance. Then you're going to see a breaker and then a mitigation block and then the old high that forms above the mitigation block caps or terminates that price run or that dealing range and then ipta sends it the other way and so it's this constant ebb and flow and i think the best way that ict has described it is the paint roller on the wall up and down back and forth and what it's doing the the program or the algorithm is simply seeking fair value okay so again let's recap you can mark your dealing ranges with a higher high and a lower low or a failure swing, which is basically a return to an OTE and or rejection block. Both of those are in the same category. It doesn't get lower. So in this case, you have a rejection block and an OTE blended together, just based on the structure that we're looking at right here. So that's one of the harder parts is just seeing enough variations on these types of structures 
and concepts until you've got a database in your brain subconsciously that tells you, okay, I've seen this before. I know what's going to happen next. And then when it does happen next, it instills extra confidence in your entries or exits or management, whatever you're doing. So to complete the first thought that we were on here, here's the dealing ranges on the downside, all inside a singular parent dealing range, which is there to there. And in this case, you would look for the first swing low. So here's it's extended and far away, so it's kind of confusing. You'd look for this first swing low and the lower low. But then your eye goes over here. And it's like, okay, here's a lower low. So I'm referring to this as the, as the end cap. Now, does that really matter if you're just measuring? No, it doesn't. Not really. If you're trying to take entries based off market structure shift and things like that, then that would be an issue that you might want to consider. So that's the concept of dealing ranges. I'm going to pause and ask if anybody has a question. We'll handle it and deal with it right now. If so, and then we can move on to the next. OK, all right. Uh, all of these things tie together. It's like a tapestry or a book, or I guess if you want to call it um, like a weapon, you've got a gun, which is your basic uh, understanding that there's manipulation in the market. And then you've got your scope, which is the 2022 model or your entry model or whatever that you use to get in into the market. And then the problem that people have is like, okay, I see a target. I see where it's going. I, I, I'm getting really good at staying still and patient and quiet until my target comes into sight. It comes to me. I see it. It's walking across my scope or my field of vision in my scope. It, you mastered that part through discipline and learning. And then when you finally decide to apply the concepts, people forget that you have to adjust for distance, windage, and elevation. So how high are you in, in uh, rel relevant to your target, right? So in comparison to where you're shooting, how high or how low are you? What's the wind speed that's going to affect your bullet? And then, of course, um, the distance to the target matters as well. So what is that? Well, that part is context, drawn liquidity, and narrative. The context is like if-then logic. What I mean by that is, well, if it can get this far, then it can get that far. And if it can get that far and I've missed the initial run, can I get in short and it will continue down? Yes, it will. Okay, cool. That's what that is. Okay. And so that's context. And then narrative is, is the time of day proper? Is there a valid reason for price to be doing what it's doing right now? And am I, is, am I clear about it? Is it obvious to me? what is why it's doing what it's doing and then your narrative is the draw on liquidity where does it need to get to and where can it get to and so it all cycles back into each other because now you're back to context do we have enough time in the day to get to where i think it's going to go based on what the draw is for this session or this entire day or the week or what have you so all of that's really important because what price is constantly doing is it's seeking fair value. And the way that it does that is two things. It's either going to take liquidity or it's going to rebalance and imbalance. And then if it's not doing one of those two things, which are usable trade environments, then it's going to consolidate or range back and forth. And that's called chaos, the chaos program, which we don't even consider. That's why we say it only does two things and it either goes up or it goes down. Anything in between, we don't want to deal with it. We just use it as a framework for entries and targeting. I hope that makes sense. So um, the, the way that price is moving back and forth is it's creating or printing certain PD arrays, certain candles that are shaped in certain ways at certain areas of a range, and they behave in certain ways, and they look like certain things, and they, they show up over and over and over and over and over. This is basic stuff, but most people don't tell you how to, how to wait for them to print and to understand what's coming next. When, you, when that actually clicks for you, you will never be lost again. You might still be impatient. You might get in early. You might burn yourself even, but you'll never, ever be lost. I'm never lost in price, ever. I might not know what the 
draw on liquidity is at that moment. But I know what the market is doing and what the present structure is doing. So if I wanted to, I could catch a 15 point run. But my experience is saying, is it worth it? Is the juice worth worth the squeeze to be in there back and forth now that you know what you know? And it's not. It's better to just try to sniper one or two good trades in a good time of day, depending on that daily market profile. And, you know, as, as a person who likes to scalp, it's very difficult for me to stay in that framework. But when I do, I do very well. Okay. So when, when you understand price on a certain level, you'll never be lost and the fear goes away, but you can still really fucking hurt yourself. So be careful. That's what that rant was about. So we've covered dealing ranges. We've covered um, the different ways that the end caps or the end points form, which you see right here, the two different ways. And then uh, the two types of fair value, all of this ties together, which is why I went on that rant. The concept of premium and discount is your filter. So it's your filter for what PD array is going to be relevant and valid right now, or what series of PD arrays above or below the marketplace is IPTA really going to refer to? What is it programmed to be looking at right now? Whether that's this day, this session, this hourly candle, 15 minute candle, what have you, it's all fractal. So the way that you really clearly give yourself the best opportunity for entries is filtering for premium and discount. So what that means is the dealing ranges that you just spotted, you're measuring the dealing range in quarters. So instead of just saying, okay, that's the dealing range, and then having it like this, It's better to have your quarters and your EQ, which is the equilibrium or halfway point, measured out and look at that perfectness right there. The reason why you do that is because price is always seeking fair value, as I mentioned before. And the way that it gets to fair value is by, um, is by rebalancing or taking liquidity in the market structure itself. So like highs being swept, lows being swept, fair value gaps getting tapped or chopped around inside to, you know, to balance them out. That's fair value on a market structure level. But IPTA is looking back in certain ranges, yesterday's high and low, three days prior, 20 days prior, 40 days prior, 60 days prior. It's referring to key high time frame levels or PD arrays that are around those time periods or those points in time off to the left of the chart, okay? And so what that means for you is fair value is being found by balancing and liquidity taking on a market structure level, but it's also being found by returning to premium or discount of the higher time frame range. So what is that? Well, the first type of fair value has to do with PD arrays and market structure. And the second type of fair value has to do with the range of these PD arrays, the range meaning how far are they apart from it from each other? You know, what direction are they forming in relative to each other? And what priority is IPTA giving them? IPTA is interbank price delivery algorithm. If you didn't know that, it's an algorithm that has three or four programs coded into it. It's either going to institute a buy program, a sell program, chaos or it will allow for a fourth input method where you can just manually intervene and set your own targets willy-nilly, which is manual intervention, and they do that all the time. So uh, we've covered the dealing ranges, the types of them, the two types of fair value. Again, I'll recap. Your e price is either seeking fair value inside of the candles or above and below highs and lows, or it's seeking fair value inside of a range. It's always going to try to come back to discount for smart money to be able to buy. So the the algorithm is not accidentally leaving behind its its footprints. It's doing it on purpose. It's designed to give smart money opportunities to get in and to give them multiple opportunities to do so. That's what it's for. It's for them. And you're just riding the coattails. So this concept was really hard for me to understand because I get lost forest for the trees type thing where I'm like all in these candles on a 15 second basis. I'm like, oh, okay, oh, it's taking this and it's 
at a discount relative to this micro dealing rate. You know, it's easy to get lost. But if you combine them both together and they're both working in harmony and unison, for example, this return to the EQ, if you dial down on a one minute or a 15 second, you'll find the same elements happening of price being rebalanced, fair value gaps being utilized, so on and so forth. Right here is what we're looking at, I believe. And so do you see the start of a new dealing range on the lower time frame occurs at the equilibrium and it dips just barely in the discount. 703, 75, by two points exactly. And that's all it needed. And immediately it's, it's going. <clears throat> so what ICT was trying to teach you guys and show you is that the best areas to look for these turning points and therefore entries for directional moves is at fair value, speaking both on a range basis and in market structure itself. So whether that's an OTE or whether it's a rejection block entry or some sort of PD array that is inside of this dealing range. So we're at a discount relative to this entire move over here, but we're also in a discount relative to the last down move. And just like price was seeking to return to the EQ there, it's also going to do it here. It's like waves, guys, back and forth, back and forth, over and over. Look at that. This whole thing was just a return to this. And whether or not it stops there and keeps going down or goes up is a matter of the narrative context and the logic and all the stuff I was telling you about, the draw and liquidity. That's where all that comes into play. It's like adjusting for windage and elevation and distance so that you actually do hit your target and you're still there when price gets to your target and you're not thrown off, shook off, blown out, or pissed off and on tilt, or all of the above. Okay. So... Uh, that is the concept of fair value. There's two types of fair value. The range of whatever time period we're talking about, the past three days, the past 10 days, past 20 days, 40, 60, the past session, high and low. It works on all periods. And then fair value in terms of has the fair value gap been rebalanced enough? Is the, is the minor range down here, has it been balanced? And then are we moving back to balance of the previous opposing range for this move up? And to be honest with you, some of my best trades are when I recognize a reversal point, I wait for the JB candle, and then I'm, I'm in it. And it just goes right to target. Obviously not here, right? This was not the best example. But that's the concept in a nutshell. And again, all of this ties together. So let me recap for you. The dealing range is the PD array matrix. It is also just a price run with multiple price legs inside of it. That is the dealing range with multiple little baby dealing ranges inside. And each, each one of these dealing ranges has a PD array matrix, a full PD array matrix played out inside of it. And the lower time frames that you get and the smaller ranges that you're dealing with, it's very difficult to really grasp that because, for example, like right here, that's an old high. Let me zoom in. I mean, I'd have to do this and get really close to see, boom, there's an old high. There's a rejection block. It's it just over and over and over. It never stops. It does the same thing over and over and over. So if you get really good and you can build a model, the 2022 model is designed to do this, but it sometimes doesn't get you in soon enough and you miss opportunities. But if you can build an advanced model that gets you in in these top three PD arrays, order block, fair value gap is... Uh, barely present. It's really tiny right here. So for me, I would be looking over here.
there we go. Sorry, that took so long. My computer was freaking out. And notice that we didn't, we couldn't even get back up to the fair value gap. And this is also a breakaway gap right here because it didn't close it in. It left some of it open. So that right there is called an algorithmic signature. It's the way, the quality, the very exact way and and how it's how IPTA is treating these PD arrays, whether it's respecting them to the utmost degree or whether it can't even get to them and then it just shits the bed in this case. That is all tell it's all revealing itself. That's the algorithm saying, hey, this is your last chance to get on board because I'm not fucking coming back for a good a long while. And it's just off to the races from here. So sometimes you just gonna have to visually keep this in your mind because on a micro scale, as you keep getting smaller and smaller, the PD array matrices get harder and harder to draw out. But you can see them and they're still there. For example, high, higher highs, low. Here's the breaker right here. And again, price is telling you something because it can't even come back up and, and get this. It just rejected off the quarter level. So you can grade your PD arrays. Do you see how? We just left it. Like we came right up to the quarter, left it, and didn't even come and retest it. Normally you would see this breaker be retested. And that would be your safe conservative entry that ICT teaches. But in this case, twice it's telling you, it said, okay, you didn't listen to me. I'm out of here. And again, it didn't come back up. So learning to read price in that way is a whole nother skill that just takes a lot of time and a lot of chart you know, obsession, I guess is the right word. So let's finish playing this out, this whole dealing range right here. Remember what I talked to you about uh, PD arrays being squashed? So I want to show you like that. Do you see how we have a high, a higher high? So this is a breaker swing. And in this case, yes, there's a swing here that looks like a breaker. And technically, yes, that could that is a breaker. And I'll show you why it is in a second. But it's not relevant to this dealing range. This overall parent dealing range. This here is what we're referring to. So this swing high was not traded to. So you have the opposite of a breaker. You have a high a low and a lower high over here. Now, as it's playing out, this is where people get tripped up. It's not black and white. It's not just like it's going to do the exact same thing every time. The PD arrays will show up every single time, but they're not always going to act right, and there will be some variance to how they're treated. So again, that's algorithmic signature. What is IPTA doing to these PD arrays? Is it giving them the, the utmost respect? which typically means it's in a pure cell program. It's got a place to fucking be, and it needs to get there now. So it's like, oh, boop, tap, and then gone. That's where institutional order flow is on board, and they're supporting that move. But I digress. So anyways, there's your mitigation swing. So that's a mitigation block. Now, right after the mitigation block forms, what do we have? We've got an old low. And I hate using this, but I will. Well, actually, no. If I do that, it's going to kick me all the way back. Uh, but anyways, you have an old low here, which completes the PD array matrix to the downside. Can you guys see this? I mean, it, it just shows up every every price leg. So you got your old high rejection block. You got to expand it to be able to see what it is, RB. Order block, which is typically part of the rejection block, usually not always. 
fair value gap, sometimes it's not clear, sometimes it's not here. You can use an IFEG if that's the case. It's over here. Breakers and XPD array. And then you want to see some measure of an expansion leg out of the breaker before you see your mitigation block, which is exactly what you get here. Right there. Again, we're not seeing this as a breaker. It is, but we're going to get to that in a second. We're looking at this relative to this matrix. And then once it forms its old low and it starts coming back up into this dealing range, it starts another PD array matrix all over again. So that's where they blend together, like the ends of these blend together. So as if, let me just describe it this way. If you've ever looked at the PD array matrix chart that he shared in core content and it's floating around the internet, so I'm sure you can Google it. What he does not tell you and lets you figure out for yourself is that those, the bearish and the bullish PD array matrix are connected to each other. Where one ends, the other begins, and it's just a big loop in a circle, which is exactly what you see here. Mitigation block, old low. And then it starts over again. And I'll move on from this in a second. I just want to hammer this home. Try to spot it with me. I might be moving a little fast, but try to spot it as I'm doing it. Remember what I said about the fair value gap needing to be clear for the one that IPTA is actually going to refer to? That's why I'm marking that one over there and not this one, in case you were wondering. And then again, what do I use this for? For information, right? We couldn't even get back up to it and then look at that. Just gone. So then what do we have over here off to the left? What is this? Remember that thing and this too? Here's a breaker. Here's a breaker. This one's no longer relevant, so we're going to use this one. The lowest body candle and or the lowest wick. And isn't that also the mitigation block, which is now a breaker? Yes, it is. And that's how it's tying together. Boom, boom, boom. And you can use this one. This is the parent. Again, just like the dealing ranges, you have the parent breaker swing and then the baby breaker swing. And it's sort of... Um, an art form rather than a science to it's you have to figure out let me describe it this way you have to figure out where you are in the daily profile what to expect based off of that and if you are aligned in the correct direction when this is happening then that will really tell you and give you the idea of which one of these to use because typically it will leave the top one alone and go for the parent one and if it can't reach any either one of them, then obviously that's a sign as well. Because look how much further it went down after, you know, let's say you didn't get warning or you didn't get in. Like, is it going to keep going down? Yeah, it will because this is a breaker. This is also a breaker, but we're going to get to that later. Okay. All right, so I've been blabbing for a while. Let me see what I've done. Dealing ranges, the two types, two types of fair value gaps, or excuse me, uh, fair value, which is PD arrays like fair value gaps and structure, and then the range or the dealing ranges, the way they work with each other. The distance between the ends of those ranges forms the uh, quarter levels and the EQ and so on and so forth. And you use premium discount as a filter to filter out where you are in price based on that or where the more uh, probable direction is going to be based on what's happening right now relative to that range that just played out. Does that make sense? It's like this range right here. If I'm bearish and I want to see it keep going down, I need to submit to the fact that it's going to go to the EQ first, more, than, more often than not. When we start getting close to the target that we're actually reaching for, it'll start hitting these quarter levels and continuing, and you don't even get EQ retouches. 
but in this case, it came up for a deep OTE and blasted through. This is a trade, this return back up to the EQ or beyond, that is a trade. And so that is how you would know that this is not just going to continue down. Because you see a dealing range here, don't you? A clear, obvious dealing range, and then it turned on a dime. All of this is time distortion and doesn't matter to you, except if it's providing what looks like an entry. In this case, it does. Very clean rejection block entry. Let's say you missed that. Here's your order block. Plenty of opportunities to get in on an order block. Let's say you were scared to take that. And you waited for all this. There's your fair value gap. So many chances to enter. Do you see that? And then what's weird about this price action, and this is actually a good example, there is no swing low being taken for this to be a breaker yet. So this, all of this garbage is just time distortion. It's meaningless to me. Yes, there are PD arrays in there, but IPTA is treating them like shit. It doesn't care about them. It's not programmed to respect them in this case. Until we, so this is time distortion, time distortion, boom, 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 until we get right into the power hour macro, last hour, 450, excuse me, uh, 350, 250 my time, 350 Eastern. And then look at that 2022 model entry. In this case, you've got a swing low here that got taken, and then a break in market structure, and then the entry. Why do I not consider this a breaker, even though here's a swing low? Why is there? Because there's no clear breaker in here that makes any sense. This could all just be part of an order block. In fact, it is. So all, we are, all we're seeing here is like another nested order block, OK? And even here, are we seeing the breaker swing yet? No, we're not. The first time we see it is right here. So when you get really good at price action and it starts throwing you for a loop like that, you'll just be waiting on the PD array matrix to play out to confirm whether or not, like a, a time filter, whether or not it's time to start looking for entries based on which one you trust the most. And look at that respect right there. You see that? It's just fucking beautiful. So this is one of those cases where I was telling you the PD array matrix and the dealing ranges are not always going to be symmetric symmetrical, I guess is the right term. Uh, or clean, sometimes they will be squashed, and then they'll expand in random ways, air quote random. Uh, so yeah, and then when you're targeting, that's when you're basically just monitoring uh, for the low-hanging fruit on the low baby range. But you're also keeping an eye on this parent dealing range to see, can I leave a runner on? In this case, yes, you could, up to an OTE level or something like that. And I bet you this whole thing right here is an order block on the five minute or 15 minute or even the hourly. So it would have taken you three or four hours if you were in from over here, maybe five hours, and you would have got to target, and that would have been, well, depending on where you entered, 50-point run. This is not the best time. This is like Asian end of day, so that's why it took so long. But do you guys, you understand, right? Is there any questions about what I'm explaining to you, how we were filtering all of this out until we saw a clear breaker? And now we know, okay, I'm safe for it to continue going up. And if it does not continue going up, then I know early that I'm absolutely wrong about this direction. And it's from here, the breaker is going to fail. I can inverse myself and enter that way if I want and go short. And then hold, hold that as long as I can like, squeeze every last drop out of that one because I know it's clearly not going up. I'm wrong. I hope that makes sense. So let me just continue marking this out so you understand. Here's the mitigation block. It's okay for, for them to do this. 
Like it's not going to be clean. And there's the old high right there. And then what do we do? We start it all over again, going the opposite way because we're done with our targets. So there's the old high. I'm just, I'm not even going to do it. I've done it so many times. There's a projection block. This whole thing is an order block, but you'll refine it to this one. Here's the breaker, the baby breaker. Here's the parent breaker swing. So there's the parent breaker. Anyways. Uh, that's an in-depth instru instructional, I guess, or tutorial on what he's actually talking about when he mentions these dealing ranges, these price runs, these PDRA matrices, and how it all flows together. So um, let's talk about targets. The time of day that price is arriving at your target, particularly if it's a higher time frame target, that matters. And that sounds stupid and simple, but the time of day is going to tell you whether or not we're just going up to just tap it and then reverse, or whether or not we're going to go to it and through it. So uh, without getting too far down that rabbit hole, look for key times of day for market reversal profiles, and you can trade that move up to the high time frame and then back down away from it and hold the, the second position away from it for the rest of the day. So that's one of those days where you can catch a good scalp, make some equity cushion, like $1,000 or something like that. And now if you see the opposite move playing out and you know that's the real move for the day, you can go full size and have an additional equity cushion that's basically taking away some of your risk, if that makes sense. So uh, that's a little ditty that I do for uh, converting my scalps or my scalp opportunities into long-term trades. Sometimes if I'm scalping counter to the trend, I'll look for the trend move and uh, I'll go full size on that as well and use the money I made going the opposite way on the stop hunt as a cushion in case I'm wrong. So, okay, uh, mapping the PDRA matrix. We did a lot of that. If you guys want me to do more of it, I mean, shit, we could do it right here real quick. Old low. I'm not going to um, make, you know, like, type out everything and make them exactly right, but you guys get the point. This whole thing's an order block, by the way. And this all is time distortion. And then there's your fair value gap. You've got your breaker inside. Again, this is where it gets weird because inside this order block, you've got your breaker inside of it. Oh, well, technically that one, that's not it. I thought I saw a swing low over here. So what we could be seeing here is time distortion inside this parent order block to form the breaker of this PDRA matrix to go take a short-term high, and then we can continue downward for the week if that is to be the case. So let me go ahead and actually scoot these over. And I guess I do need to mark them out. So what we could do then is look at this up here and project that as the breaker. And look at this as a, a nested order block that has not been confirmed by a higher high yet. And so we'd be waiting for something like this to happen. To the mean threshold probably or almost to it form the 2022 model with another baby, baby lower time frame breaker and then a new PDRA matrix going to the upside to finish this one that's not complete yet because it's all fractal, remember? And then why am I picking this, you know, this distance? Well, because I'm kind of eyeballing this over here as a dealing range and I want to see it at least get to e, uh, EQ or discount. And if you notice, I got pretty damn close to what it's probably going to do. It'll probably get a little further down here, and we'll see like an OTE. This is one of those times where I'd say uh, it could OTE, and that'd be permissible. Or maybe stop like at the halfway point of this wick here. Treat this as a BPR. So, uh, all right, so I've done basically almost all of what I wanted to get accomplished here for foundational stuff. 
and uh, I can go further into like the JB block, which is basically just a made-up name for a, a variation of a breaker that happens inside of a 22 model. So um, let's get all this off the chart real quick. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, let's take some questions. I think somebody's been posted in the Discord. Let me see what you got to say. Oh, it's Walt. He's got to go. No problem. Okay. Um, that's about it. I mean, I really don't have anything else to cover. Unless you have something specific, pop it in the chat or get on the mic and let me know. All right. Well, thanks for your time. Hope you have a great weekend. And uh, be careful when the market's open. Don't ruin yourself at the beginning of the week because it could get really crazy with the month rollover. And uh, until then, we'll talk to you later. Bye.